Legends Lifestyle Podcast with your hosts, Jill and Angela. Episode two, we're calling it Body and Soul. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. And we are talking about... Oh, Angela, there's so much to get into on this one. (laughs) When we eat and exercise for reasons other than appearance, um, magical things happen. Yeah. Um, It's the opposite of our diet culture. It's um, treating ourselves with love and care and feeding ourselves nutritious food and it's amazing the mental emotional physical benefits that come about with that shift in thinking so instead of going for a particular beauty ideal you are nourishing your body so that you can do your soul work that's what we're talking about today yes i love how you i love how you frame that because when you frame it like that you, you are doing these things because you love yourself, not because you don't like something about yourself and you're looking to constantly change it and judge yourself. That has to stop. The self-judgment, the self-criticism, that language we use in our, in our own dialogue about ourselves, changing the language until you, you're an author, you love words too, we love words, and changing the language around improvements, if you will, um, engaging in more joy, it really has an impact. Yeah. It's the way we frame it. It's the lens through which we see it. Yes, it's, it's changing the why. Because when you have a strong why, you are unstoppable. And the why becomes, uh, what do I feed my body so that I can do the things that bring me absolute joy in this life, this one time around the sun, you know? Um, I am always remembering when I, I have a daughter, Lindsay, who uh, I was just bound and determined for her not to have the body issues that I did growing up, the yo-yo dieting, the self-loathing, the, um, the, the fad diets, the fad exercise, excessive exercise programs. And I was just really determined that she wouldn't have that. So we never said the four letter word diet in our house when she was growing up. But one of the ways I taught her a, a different way of thinking of fruits and vegetables, let's say we did this little thing and it was wildly popular with her and her friends. We would put (laughs) five little bracelets on one wrist. They were little like string bracelets, colorful or plastic or, you know, rubbery little bracelets. I would find it like the dollar store. And every time she ate a fruit or a vegetable, she would move one of the bracelets to the other wrist. And she and her friends would get to the point where, oh, I, I ate my grapes today. So they moved the, the, you know, the bracelet over and it became fun and it became a game, but it also became a habit to learn about, you know, fruits and vegetables. Um, that's a, that's one way of shifting, making the shift rather than you have to eat your fruits and vegetables. Um, and for us as, adults with so much oh gosh so much weight no pun intended Mm. uh, on our bodies and what they look like and how they give us license in the world sometimes wrongly but and how we can empower ourselves to not buy into that system and say, oh no, this is my temple and this is how I honor it. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot there, uh, to be able to shut out the noise of the, the ideal, uh, the body ideal, if you will. And fortunately we see that that is changing. People are embracing their more authentic selves. And the thing is to 
I mean, when you think about the way you speak to other people and the way you speak to yourself, why should it be any different? You should treat yourself and speak to yourself and nourish yourself verbally, mentally, emotionally, the way that you do for others. But we are very hard on ourselves. The stakes actually, I think, uh, as we talk about being women of a certain age, are a little higher and not in the visibility category and how we look, but in the nutrition and health and wellness category. And it's never too late. This is another thing that comes up for us uh, as we talk. It's never too late to start loving yourself enough to being to be really good for yourself, to being good to yourself. That bracelet idea is genius, right? <laughs> That's like you need to patent that. And do I, that. I could see adult women doing that, yes. and, you know, like put, putting, you know, getting some gorgeous glam bracelets five and moving them because, uh, you know, it isn't necessarily a habit in American culture. We really got away from cooking at home family meals in the, you know, 50s, 60s, and fast food became much more of the go-to, especially if you were a working woman. Um, and I remember begging my mom, can we please go to Pizza Hut? You know, can we just please, like all, and all my other friends, you know, and she was, she was kind of ahead of her time in that. She insisted on cooking uh, every night, it was a rarity. I think it was a budget thing probably too when, when we were growing up. But but she would uh, shop on Saturday for the whole week and then cook meals and always had a vegetable uh, and always tried to have a well-rounded type of meal with a lot of different, you know, food groups, if you will, all the food groups. But yeah, it's a, it, but we're coming back around, I think, because we are seeing the health issues that have ensued because of that fast food uh diet and uh it's it is it's such a vicious cycle of the eating because you think it's your reward and you think this is what uh it's going to make me feel and it is there's a whole chemical thing going on there where it is highly addictive the fast foods fatty foods high sugar foods um but then the self-loathing and then you do the drop physically you know your your sugar your goes drops and then you need the high again you need to feel good again so you go for the the junk food um so i watched you really shift when you it, it's all connected right when you started taking the dance lessons ballroom dance lessons and you started honoring that passion you just really made a shift in what you were nurturing yourself with in the way of nutrition. Yes. I, and the way that I did it was I did it similar to your bracelet idea. I, we didn't, I, I didn't like broccoli. I didn't, we didn't grow up on salads. It, it wasn't a thing in my house. Well, your I mother would, was a working mother. My mother worked. She yeah. worked. She, we, my mother had a work ethic second to none. Uh, the household that we grew up in, it was good, basic food. We were never hungry, but it wasn't. And my brain, uh, I think it's important to know yourself. My brain likes carbs and sugar. It likes these certain things. And I think brain chemistry does have something to do with it. But you do get to a point where you decide how you want to live your life. And what's more important to you is that cookie or that bag of box of cookies or chips or, or chips whatever. or whatever or the deep dish pizza do you love that more than you love yourself do you love that more than you love your ability to feel good to dance to engage in a joyful life so for me these were questions i had to ask myself and i said do you what what are your priorities and what i did was i don't like to be deprived like most people of anything and the way that i started was i started adding to my diet so let's just say for argument's sake, I wanted two slices of pizza. I would eat that, but I would take steamed broccoli, not the pizza broccoli, but I would take in order a side dish of steamed broccoli and I would add that. 
So instead of removing things from my diet, I started by adding the good stuff into my diet. And I found that for me to be a really useful tool. And the other thing I started to really look at, because I'm like, I deserve to be as well nourished as everyone else. I, my body deserves that. I started to look at food more as nutrition. And that's when the wire was tripped for me. And I said, okay, what kind of life do you want to live? And that's, that's the question I asked myself. And that's when it started. And then it all intersected with the dancing and the eating well and the feeling better. But you have to be willing to let go of that initial reward. It's so tasty. It feels good on my brain. I've had a long day. I'm watching TV. I deserve this carbohydrate thing. Because like you and I laugh, what, nobody craves broccoli at nine o'clock at night. <laughs> We're not sitting there. I need a bag of steamed broccoli right now. <laughs> Honey, go to the store and get a bag of steamed yeah, Oh, I just, steamed just go broccoli. to the drive through uh, <laughs> the steamed broccoli drive through and pick me up some uh, some Brussels sprouts and broccoli. <laughs> Nobody does that. So you have to know yourself and you have to know what you want out of your life. And, yeah. And you can do it. You know what I said to you? I said, and I have to tell myself this too. There's not a lot, there's not, you can't control everything in your life, but you can control taking this, going like, well, I'm, I'm visualizing now this is audio, but I'm taking my hand, I'm placing it down, I'm picking something up and I'm putting it into my face. You actually have control over that. Yeah. You really do. And you have to know that. Yeah. You have to know well, there's that. so much there. Uh, number one, I love the way you do that. It's not about deprivation, which is what really, that, that whole uh, game in your head goes to, but, 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 but I want that. I can't have it. So of course I want that. So the, that was super smart. What you did, you added to your diet. So you added this very nutritious food that's full of vitamins and full of fiber and actually really fills you up. So you were, uh, just sneaking in the good stuff. And then, like you said, you start to feel better and you start to function better. And when you start to have that payoff, then you go, oh, okay. So do I want this? Because I know how I'm going to feel later. You start to put those two together. If I eat this now, this is how I'm going to feel later. So if I eat the bag of gummy bears, I'm having fun on the couch watching TV before bed. But sure enough, uh, there's the, the headache that comes on because you know, all the sugar and the, the bleh that's in there. I mean, listen, nobody loves candy and cookies and chocolate and ice cream more than me. I think Angela, you and I both have that sweet tooth, like nobody's <laughs> oh, yeah. business. We love, but now I'm so much better. I'll do that every once in a while, but for the most part I go, I get my piece of dark chocolate. I savor it when I want something sweet after a meal and I'm good. And I, I've really made that connection of like, I'm going to feel good about this meal and this dessert. I'm not going to feel bloated and full and not want to do, uh, you know, something that's really going to make me feel good. Like for you, for it's dance, um, that really is feeding your soul. You know, a lot of times we eat those things because we're not really doing what we need to do to fill our souls. We're not giving ourselves that gift. Wow. Uh, so true. You know, we do look, you say this, it's an inside job, right? Happiness is an inside job. And I would add eating well uh, it, to self-care and it being an inside job. You know what gives you joy. You're not going to have to dig that deep to find it. And you'll find a way to do it. We've talked about this before, whether it's dancing or whether it's writing or singing or golf or painting. When you tap into that natural talent, there's synergy. And when you have that kind of fulfillment, there is no better diet and we're not, we don't use that word, but just for verbal shorthand, there is no better way to get healthy and diet than to give yourself what your soul and your mind craves. Because truly your appetite for food 
will decrease significantly because you have joy in these other areas. Yeah. And I think it's important to note as well, you kind of touched on it at the beginning, this whole beauty ideal is shifting very quickly and I love it. We are starting to embrace more body types as, and, and they're landing on the front covers of magazines and they're rock stars and pop stars and actresses, very successful actors and actresses who do not have this body that we were told Angela was the ideal, you know, skinny, skinny, skinny. Um, it is just so refreshing and it makes me so happy because we are not all meant to look the same as silly and simple as that seems. It's needs to be said. We are not all meant to look the same. We are unique. Uh, we are beautiful in our uniqueness and embracing that empowers us. And when you see, uh, these different women just owning their lives, big and bold, loud and proud. And it's just, it's, it's beautiful. You have to see it, you know, young girls and boys especially need to see it to know that it exists and to know that it's okay. They need to see it in movies and on television. Uh, they need these visuals of different body types and, and beauty ideals that are held up to feel like, okay, I don't have to look like that. That's impossible for me anyway, but you know, and you and I, I feel some freedom. I don't strive for the same number on the scale that I did even five years ago. I just don't. I that the new beauty culture, more diverse, has opened up um, a sort of like a window for me, for me to to be more authentic. Authentic, it, you know, authenticity to yourself to be your best self, to, to, to live your life with health, good health. It's really, that is what it's about. It's not about, you know, the images that were, were, were shown or that we're inundated with, you know, again, the noise of what we're supposed to look like or where we're supposed to be, uh, at a certain point at a certain time in our lives, you know, to thine own self be true is one of my favorite sayings because you know how you want to feel and you know what it's going to take to get you there. Again, you know, you said it in the beginning, this is not about the visuals. This is about nourishing your body, giving your body what it needs to be its healthiest and most engaged. And that's what is what we're learning more and more. And you know, there's so much more information out now about nutrition and to be able to tap into that and the kinds of foods that we have access to, it's important to eat the best way you can for, for you. You may not have access to all the, the, the ideal or perfect foods, if you will, but if you do a little bit of research and find out, can I just say one thing that changed my life, one kind of food that I talk about? I have to say this because it's so practical, but blueberries are one of the best foods. It's the number one antioxidant. You can put it in yogurt. You can put them in oatmeal. I started with blueberries. I started with blueberries. That and was your, gate, your gateway fruit. <laughs> It was my gateway food. It all did. And now I eat. So blueberries are not only high in fiber, but they're great for your brain. They're called brain berries. They help ward off dementia. They also are a little bit of a mood booster. Yes. Um, antidepressant. Yes. And you know what? I don't care about the calories on the blueberries. By the way, this calorie counting is another story. If yeah. you are eating well, and I know I eat blueberries quite often throughout the day, like I'll buy a container and I do put them in other things, but then I just eat them by the handful. So for me, um, it start, it kind of started there. So I just want to give a, a shout out to the, to blueberries. blueberries. Can I get a what, what? <laughs> what, what, blueberries. If Hi, you're Paul. listening. <laughs> <laughs> but over the years, you know, the more I read about these little fruits, but that's an example of something you can add to your diet. Um, they taste 
fine. You know, cause I'm all, I'm like, I love dessert. Oh, the sweeter, the better. I would never order apple dessert, anything because apple dessert to me is like, that's not dessert. That's a fruit. So like, you see where I'm coming from here, yes. but blueberries for me, if you just started there with this one thing as a practical action step, let me know how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're very healthy. You eat very healthy. Well, no, I mean, you make a lot of good points. Um, I think it's you, the first point you made that I really resonate with is it's sort of like the next best choice. You know, it's, if, like you said, maybe you don't have access to organic, fresh produce every day. Uh, maybe you are shifting from a very um, traditional American diet of meat and potatoes and and fast food and you know that's hard to get off of because it is it's very addictive that food gives you a very quick high uh but it's not doing your body any favors we know that or your mind you know um so it's about like that next best choice and it also leads me to baby steps again i know i sound like a broken record on that but i always approach everything with baby steps because I get overwhelmed and that's how I can kind of, so blueberries are your baby step. That's where you're, you're introducing some more fruit into your diet and on a daily basis. Um, you could start with breakfast. Uh, just a, think of it as a third of your day, a third of your day. If you can do a check and go, wow, you don't have to change your whole, you know, diet so to speak. And I always tell Richie, I know I've told you this, Angela, I say, look, it's not your last meal. You know, <laughs> don't get so emotionally attached to the meal. It's not your last meal. It's just this meal. And this meal, let's try to be as healthy as we can. So breakfast, I used to, I'm going back childhood. It was pop tarts, sugary cereals, um, it was donuts on the weekends or chocolate chip pancakes my mom would make, mm. you know, um, I loved that sugar and I got very addicted to having that in the mornings. Um, so as I got older and learned, you know, how that, uh, affects your body and I was starving by 10 30 at school and my stomach would be growling out loud and I'd be embarrassed because you could hear it across the room because it's really not giving you anything to, to, you know, and really no energy that, that will sustain you for any period of time. So just at breakfast, switching out from something like that to maybe, you know, oatmeal with blueberries or yogurt or, uh, maybe an egg or, couple of eggs and now the fast food places I notice are doing like um what was it uh Einstein bagels has sous vide um egg bagel so there's no bagel involved it's just a, an egg with like some vegetables in it that's it's like an over easy egg Dunkin Donuts has some options like egg white you know omelet type things um that if that's your next best choice if you are on the run and you stop at one of these places every morning, you get your coffee and you, you know, uh, choosing something besides that bagel breakfast sandwich, although I'm with you, divine, love, love, love. And maybe not loading up on the sugary, you know, lots of cream coffee, maybe just dialing that back a little bit. Uh, then you can say, okay, check breakfast. I did better today. And you'd be amazed how those habits start to, you know, get entrenched. Well, and what a way to start your day. What a great, uh, so food is so psychological. It, it is. And um, it's really fuel for your body. I, I had to change it from, um, uh, I've used different language because I love food. I have a very hearty appetite. I come from a long line of women that have very hearty appetites. And so I had to change the, the verbiage around it to nutrition so or nourish. Okay, I'm going to go nourish myself now instead of I'm going to eat. Uh, so I'm going to nourish myself now. And to start your day out with that launching pad of nutrition and the sense of discipline too that you get also fuels your success story. So you're eating this good food because you, take, you took the time to think and perform self-care that act, 
even outside of what you're actually eating, the act that you took to care for yourself, it, it uh, creates a momentum for success that really spills over into other areas of your life because it does take discipline. This is not always easy for people. And you're on the go, like you said. So we're busy. We're tired. Mm. Sleep is important when you want to start eating, right? Because if you're not, your body's going to crave fuel. And like I said, your body is not going to crave broccoli or uh, kale. No, it wants the quick fix. Yes. It wants the quick fix. And if you're tired and you're dehydrated, which is another reason that we want uh, to eat sometimes, um, yeah, you are you want a quick fix. And that's what carbs and sugar do. They give you a very quick uh, lift, but it's the kale and the broccoli and the, you know, the, all the, the list of nutritious foods that we all know, fresh produce, um, you know, uh, stuff from the earth mm. is always, you know, beans and, uh, limited amounts of meat. If you're a meat eater, meat eater, you know, all those things, they, they really sustain you, make you feel like you've done something good for yourself. And then, like you said, that ripple effect, it just, if you've done well at breakfast and then you go to lunch and it's a little harder to ruin <laughs> the day uh, after you've been, but you know, it's, it is a ripple effect. Once you start doing those nice things for yourself, if you shift the mindset and say, I'm, I'm, this is self-care, like you said, I'm doing these nice things for myself because I want to honor myself. I want to love myself. Um, I think I've heard this saying too, this goes right with it, that gut health equals mental health. So you talked about the blueberries. And so it is just one big, uh, cycle. It can be the vicious cycle of feeding yourself yucky foods or foods that don't have the nutritional value or a beautiful cycle where you're energized and you eat lovely meals that you enjoy wholeheartedly and then you have energy to do what you love and you know it goes on and on it does and uh you know one thing i had to do too i would uh eat a cookie let's say i'd eat a cookie mm -hmm. and there was a package of cookies and i say well i already ate one cookie it's ruined i might as well eat five yes okay don't do that <laughs> <laughs> just don't because you know what? i had to teach myself no you ate one cookie Eating four more is not, it doesn't even make sense. You, you're going to get the calories before more cookies. <laughs> you know how when you go to a store, they say, well, if you buy, you buy two, you get the other, the, the, the third one free, right? Well, you're like, yeah, but I'm still spending money on the second one. So I'm just going to take the first one. Like I always thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, I know it's a deal, but you're still spending more money than, than you would have ordinarily. The, the way that I, I looked at the cookie thing was, all right, you can have one cookie and you can stop now. And it's okay. You don't have to just throw all the work that you've done out the window and say, well, you know, the day, same with the day. If you have a bad meal, you have that moment to start fresh. After That's right. The meal. You don't have to wait till the next day or Monday or right. next month or the beginning of the year. Uh, I know that's a, a cycle that a lot of people get into. They think it has to be this momentous start of a shift in their life. Uh, and it really, like you said, can just start at the very next meal. It could start after that meal by making sure you're drinking your water. <laughs> you know, you're getting your hydration. Um, it's, it's very interesting. I think we all kind of have to figure out, like you said, what our process is, what, how we can frame it to be palatable uh, to ourselves. So what I do is I think of that like 80-20 rule. So 80% of the week, I eat very uh, nutritious food. I really have a routine of eating a nutritious breakfast, a lot of fruit, a lot of fiber, a nutritious lunch. I love salads. I love making, as I call it, a trough of salad. I make, because you can eat as much as you want of healthy foods. That's the beautiful thing. You, you don't have to limit yourself, weigh it, find out what the calorie count is. If it's nutritious foods, you eat until you're full. And that's that. There's no... Uh, measuring. Um, 
but there are times where I am stressed out because I'm human, uh, where I've had a bad day or something is happening and it's causing me anxiety and I'll just go in, I'll get a pint of ice cream. I will get the cupcake from the bakery that I pass, you know, every time I go to the <laughs> grocery and I'll just go in like it's my birthday. <laughs> and you know, I've learned to not beat myself up over that and not go into a spiral like, oh my gosh, I was so bad, you know, to just say, okay, back on the horse in the morning or back, you know, back on my program, um, which the program for me spells happiness, balance, in control, uh, my best self, the ability for my, me to be my best self, to operate at the highest level that I can. And you can start anytime. It can start now, wherever you are in your life. I started very late. I was a yo-yo dieter. I would lose 20. I would gain 15. I would. But what I had to realize is that this is a permanent lifestyle choice to nourish myself, to be as healthy as I can, to withstand anything that's going to come my way. Because as we get older, the challenges of life start to present themselves uh, in more serious ways than when we were younger. And you want to have the most solid foundation possible to be able to weather those challenges. And it starts with your own well-being, your own health, your own self-discipline, and that very strong foundation and I had a visual, I would visualize this. I thought of the most beautiful painting I had ever seen. And uh, I visualized this beautiful painting and I thought, now, would I ever walk up to this most beautiful painting and just take a can of paint and just throw this on top of it? That's what you're doing with food in a way. You have this beautiful, um, this beautiful body, this beautiful vessel. Why not treat it with the best uh, possible um, love and care and give it what it needs and requires yeah. and treat it well? Because if you do that, it the rewards, the rewards are there. We have to understand what we've been given with, with this and how important it is that nutrition be a part of it. And like you said, the word earlier is making that connection. Once you make that connection, it takes on this momentum of success. Yes, definitely. Um, I'm thinking of even little kids. I remember this being such a shock to me. A lot of kids, uh, when Lindsay, my daughter, was young, uh, when you would go in the nurse's office, there would be a lot of Ritalin bottles lined mm. up uh, for hyperactivity, you know, and for uh, attention deficit disorder and that kind of thing. And... I met a few parents who really did not want to put their children on medication at the age of seven or eight or nine. And they explored some different uh, possibilities. And a lot of them ended up with nutritionists who taught them the food that they were feeding their children was doing them absolutely no favors. And that if they changed their diet, they could get a uh, better attention span and more uh, ability to calm themselves and to uh, integrate into the school system, which, uh, and, and the results were remarkable. And I never forgot that because that's like us, where we are just a, a machine that needs to operate with really good high test fuel. Uh, it, it's just that simple. We need to put the best that we can uh, most of the time into our bodies. And then when it's time to celebrate and to have a, a feast or things that we treat, then hallelujah, go to town, have a ball, do it with gusto. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yes, because you've done all this work and you've got all this nutrition happening and and you're fine, you'll find that your indulgences become fewer and fewer, and you really do save it for the special occasions because yes. you're feeling great. Uh, you're liking what's happening to your brain. You know, it, it, it's all connected. You're thinking more clearly. You're getting better sleep. 
uh, maybe your anxiety level has has decreased a little bit. So um, really so so much of of what we need to do for ourselves involves nutrition. Yeah, it does. And it's not just the 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 fuel, it's the the movement that comes about like moving our bodies and uh, feeling energized to do that. Like I have some acquaintances and I always think, oh, I wish I could just live with them for a couple of weeks. And not that I'm a dietitian or, you know, a doctor or anything like that. It's not that I, uh, you know, know best, but I see the habits and I think, oh, if I could just come in and, and just let you experience help you experience how good you're going to feel when you get up in the morning and you do go on that walk and you're going to feel like going on that walk because you didn't put a lot of crap in your body the day before and then because you didn't put a crap crap in your body because you you uh you did some movement well then you slept better than you have in years and then it just all kind of starts like you said this momentum but if you don't start the momentum, if you feel like it's just a punishment, uh, that's what I think a lot of people feel like, Ugh, I don't want to yeah. go to the gym. I don't want to have to go. I used to feel that way. I used to feel like, oh gosh, I've got to do this. What a pain. Uh, I love exercising now. I cannot wait to do my, and I know I probably sound very obnoxious to some. <laughs> But you know what I mean. You can't wait to go to your dance lesson. Sometimes you'll go two, you'll take two classes a day. Yeah. Um, as much as you could afford, I bet you would be there a lot more if you <laughs> Yes, of course. Right? I, I end up with this hobby that uh, requires some financial investment. But there's also group classes that are much less expensive That's and right. attainable and accessible. So there's a way to find out what you love to do. That's the other thing that I figured out. I wasn't going to, I wasn't a gym person and I, and I am, I do weights now and I do some of that stuff now because I've learned that I feel good about that too. But I was, the gym was anathema to me. I, oh, I thought just doing like this, it's so boring. Well, I found something that I like to do. Um, so it has made a difference in my physical stamina, you know, maybe you, you like to play golf. Maybe it's tennis. Maybe you can do group, group dance lessons a couple of times a week. Get your friends together. You do not need a partner to dance. You can take a group class. You can dance with your instructor. If that's how it starts, that's how it started for me. And then that got me into other physical um, situations that I was, because I got, I got started. I mean, that's the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's really is about, um, flipping the switch. Mm -hmm. And it is that simple. It, it does not require analysis. It's like, this is how I want to live my life. I'm flipping the switch. This is what I'm going to do differently. Because you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. How long are you going to live? How long can you live like that? I couldn't right. do it anymore. Right. I knew I had to make changes. Well, it's, it's, I think vitality is the word that comes to mind. There's a vitality to life that comes. Like I've watched you, you now will go play basketball. You'll go hit uh, a, you know, a baseball. You'll play a uh, golf. You'll, uh, you're going to the gym, you know, which is truly when I, for, when we first met, um, now I'm still not a gym person. I'm more like I, my exercise personality is, is very, um, much on my own. It's just what works for me. I love to go for a walk. I love to bounce on my rebounder in the living room and watch uh, junk television on Bravo, <laughs> the real housewives of this or that. And there's a, <laughs> there's a train wreck happening and I'm just bouncing away. And, um, you know, just and 45 minutes to an hour has gone by and I have a full sweat going and I've had a great workout and I'm breathing, you know, getting my uh, lungs working and my body. Um, but it is, it's finding what you enjoy, not what becomes drudgery. Like I have to go to the gym. I have to, you know, go for my walk, but finding the joy in the movement and, and feeling how wonderful it is when your body is working uh, in that way. And then the vitality, uh, of your life that, that is a result of that. You feel energized. Um, I never thought I was an athlete. I was a cheerleader, you know, 
in school growing up, but I would never thought of myself as an athlete. And I remember when Lindsay, my daughter was born, I had to get exercise in really quickly, like within a half hour, if I was going to get it in, you know, to accommodate her naps and this and that and the other. So I started running instead of walking, I started running and that started this uh, for 10 years, I did 5Ks, 10Ks, I was an avid runner, and I started to think of myself as an athlete. And I started, I tried skiing for the first time, I tried, I was willing to try new things because I felt like I had some, um, you know, agency with my body that I could actually yeah, I could try that and not kill myself. <laughs> so it is, again, we're back to that, that ripple effect of just blueberries. You started with the blueberry, Angie, baby. Let it's that, let blueberries, the magic, uh, the magic potion. Yeah. Blueberries. But, but that's and... what, but it was just, it's these little shifts, these little changes, these little, um, uh, ways that yeah. we can operate in our lives to go towards uh, the next best, next best choice, next best choice. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. You know me with the quotes. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one blueberry. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Oh, they're so good for you. They really they, are. They are. They are. So if, if, uh, if that's the takeaway today. <laughs> There you go. Eat your blueberries. I'm the official blueberry brand, unofficial blueberry brand ambassador. There you go. I love it. Well, body and soul, how very connected. Uh, you cannot have balance without caring for both. And by caring for one, you really are leading to caring for the other. So that... Uh, that body and soul um, connection and just those baby steps of ways to get it started, get it rolling. Oh, I'm so, I'm so rooting for everyone and just um, don't get overwhelmed. It, it's the one thing, the one minor change, like you said, it can, it can really make a difference. And I hope that our conversation has made a difference in being able to share these experiences. is such a, these experiences really a gift. So again, I'm just grateful to be able to uh, share, share what worked for me and uh, as a res and, and the results of that and be being able to pass that on is truly a gift. Well, I guess we'll see you on the next episode of Legends. Which <laughs> I was thinking about blueberries. Well, oh what, my am my, what my blueberries are going into. I I'm sorry. I had a moment. I like, Do I have blueberries? Do I have yogurt? Where are they going? I forgot where we were. Okay. We're going we're gonna to just leave it with blueberries. <laughs> Blueberries. <laughs> <laughs>